And if you were to stop and know me, you might stop and ask the question, Dave, how did a quiet, shy farm boy like you end up here doing what you've been doing for the last 40 years? Well, that is an interesting story, and I'd like to share a little piece of that this morning with you because I think it'll tie into the question that the sermon asks. Can God satisfy me? Fifty years ago, I was a relatively newly married guy, two years almost. Our anniversary is the 29th of this month. And I was indeed, um, I was pursuing my life dream. I was farming. And because I had this amazing opportunity with my father-in-law, I was also pursuing my life goal of becoming a millionaire by the time I was 37. That's where I was going. Coming from humble roots, I was like, this is where I'm going with this, and accumulating cattle and things and equipment and so forth. I was also, as a relatively new Christian, I was engaged, very engaged in the local church that I had gone to as a little kid and that my mom and sister went to and are still going to. Well, I was ushering. In those days, we ushered everybody into a seat, greeting people. I involved myself in Sunday school. I became, in those days, the old Sunday school where you had everyone together. I ended up, by default, being the Sunday school superintendent and then ended up teaching a young adult class. And as a quiet, shy introvert, I was sweating bullets every time I got in front of anybody to do anything in that regard. Well, one day, about this time of year, it was spring, probably March, and it was blowing like crazy outside. I thought, it's middle of the week, I thought, you know what, there's nothing pressing here. I'm just going to go up to our little 600 square foot honeymoon, honeymoon bungalow we were living on the farm at that time. And I was going to uh, study my Sunday school quarterly prepare for the lesson that I was going to have to teach in a few days. And so I went up there. I think Louise was gone. It seems like I was there by myself, sitting in the chair, listening to the wind howl around the house. And I was going through this little script that, you know, teach this lesson. And there were these verses that you would look up to support the lesson. Well, I don't remember what the quarterly was about. I don't remember what the lesson was about. But in looking up these verses, this verse showed up in my study and became a watershed in my life. It's Luke 12, 34. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that's a verse that Jesus was telling his people about, his disciples about. And it's a very simple but profound reality. And it's true of every single one of us here. Where your treasure is, what you value the most, that's where your heart's going to go. That's where your energy is going to be. That's where your pursuit and passion is going to be. Well, this verse and the truth behind it just leaped off the page of the scripture that morning in an unanticipated, unexpected moment. Um, and it became life changing because as I sat there listening to the how wind howl around me, I knew where my treasure was. It was in my kingdom, my growing kingdom. It was in all the gifts that God had given me and was giving me. And the Spirit just sort of pierced me to the chair. And as a relatively new Christian, I made a decision. I decided that I wanted my treasure to be in the eternal giver, not in all the temporal gifts he had given me and was continuing to give me. 